I'll be 30 in a couple of months. I didn't expect to live till 30. I was supposed to die when I was 14 of a rather serious illness. Just the idea of being alive and chronologically arriving at 30. Bobby Darren has done an awful lot. You can only do those things if you're alive. One of those terrible dawns that hit you. Scarlet balloons, my dad on stage was sort of a master showman, uh, very comfortable. He just had a passion, a real interest in life. And I think that goes back to him deep down, him knowing he wasn't going to live. He wasn't going to have a full life. In those 37 years, he lived more than many will live in 75. I have a lot of wonderful memories of Bobby Darren. The greatest moment was when we heard the first rundown of Mac the Knife, and we looked at each other and we knew that that swinging arrangement was going to be a huge smash. There is so much to accomplish, so much to do, and so, so many good things, you know, you can taste it. There's nothing wrong with being afraid, but there's nothing more wrong than allowing that to be your master. He was born to entertain. A fast ascending star, dangerously bright, short lived, and long remembered. Walden Robert Casado renamed, reinvented himself as many times as he needed to, and through sheer force of will, became the legendary Bobby Darren. <laughs> I think being as honest as Darren was came from the strength that he had, that he knew he was a talent, he knew he was right, he could pick a song, he could write a song, he could perform it in any style he wanted, that's confidence. Bobby Darren, I think, is one of the most talented uh, singer, songwriter, performers, could have been a director, could, he could do anything. He did it all. He sang every kind of music you can possibly imagine, from gospel to blues to great ballads to up tempos. And no, no matter what it was, he could do it with facility. Anything Bobby attempted, he, he met head on and he was terrific at. He could play five or six instruments. He obviously was an award-winning singer. He was an award-winning actor. He was a very successful songwriter. He had a very good business mind. He was known as a very good dancer. When I first saw him perform, I said, my God, you know, he's, uh, he's got it in his, in his blood. I mean, there's no, no denying it. There's no doubt Bobby Darren was brash. Where it came from, I don't know. He was, you know, a New Yorker. New Yorkers tend to be a little forceful. I think that was a disguise for his inward uh, fear, the fear we all have. Will I succeed? Will I be able to go on? Uh, he wasn't He wasn't brash when he got to know him. Had you changed your name by then? Oh, yes. What was your name before? Walden Robert Casado. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> That's what, well, could you see that on a marquee? And now, tonight, one night only. Walden Robert Casado would have to be one night only. <laughs> But one night would never have been enough for Bobby. He was a New York boy with music in his soul. Born in Harlem, raised in the Bronx, and blessed with a loving mother, Holly, who nurtured his talent. 
Bobby's father was rumored to be in prison or dead. But the family seemed complete with an older sister, Nina, and her husband, Charlie. Holly had been a vaudeville entertainer, so Bobby grew up singing all the old standbys, and his swinging interpretations were his ticket to show business. Won't you come home, Bill Bailey? Won't you come home? Sing it. I'm on all day long. Sing it. Now, you know I do that cooking, baby. I'm gonna pay your rent. I know I done you wrong. And do you remember that rainy evening I drove you out with nothing but a pine tree song? Well, I know I'm to blame. Honey, ain't it a shame? I know, I know. Bobby had rheumatic fever when he was eight years old and overheard the doctor tell his mother that he wouldn't live to the age of 21. And from that point on, he started running, you know, and there's no time to waste and we're going to do it now. And yes, I'm brash and yes, I'm in your face, but not because I'm, you know, rude, but because I got to get somewhere. You may have an extra 10 years to get there. I don't. I'm going there now. I took a job when I was uh, 17 years old. I, I got into college when I was 16. I entered in order to become part of a campus theater group to get up on a stage and apply what I hoped would be my trade. I was given that opportunity more than amply in the first semester, and it was taken away from me in the second semester. My purpose was clear and defined, so I retired from college life and went into the street to fight it. He wasn't getting very many breaks, except that uh, George Sheck, who was my manager and also met, found Bobby, um, uh, the second week that he, after he had found him, got him a contract with Decca Records. And there was a, a hit song in England called Rock Island Line by Ronnie Donegan. And they had, Decca had Bobby recorded as his first record for the States. Now let me tell you where I'm going, boy. On the Rock Island Line, it's a mighty good road. Rock Island Line, it's the road to ride. Rock Island Line, it's a mighty good road. And if you want to ride it, gotta ride it like you find it. Get your ticket on the station on the Rock Island Line. Ooh. Well, it's A, B, C, W, X, Y, Z. Cat's in the corner and he don't see me on the Rock Island Line. It's a mighty fine road. Rock Island Line, it's the road to ride. Rock Island Line, it's a mighty fine road. If you want to ride it, got to ride it like you find it. I had a marvelous debut, I think. It was on a show called The, um, the Stage Show. I was with Decca at the time. And they said, we've got a record here, it's going to be a smash. I learned it on a Tuesday, recorded it on a Tuesday evening, as a matter of fact, and then did the, the uh, Jackie Gleason show on a Saturday evening, and I really wasn't sure of the lyrics. And they were not about to serve my myopic uh, condition, and so therefore they couldn't give me cue cards, and so I devised my own, which was on the palm of my hand. Right, and I may be wrong, but you're gonna miss me before long. On the Rock Island Line, it's a mighty fine road. Rock Island Line, it's the road to ride. Rock Island Line, it's a mighty good road. If you wanna ride it, gotta ride it like you find it. Get your ticket on the station on the Rock Island At the end of the show, everybody you know, knew what I was doing, of course, except my sweet mama. My mama said, uh, you were wonderful and that wonderful. I never saw anybody use his hands like that there. I was about to, to meet my first real character and my first real love. A man I would love till the day he died and beyond that. Connie's father was very possessive and didn't like her budding relationship with Bobby. Bobby walked into the office one day and George Sheck was sitting there very glum behind his desk, feeling an ache in his heart because my father had told him that unless he stopped managing Bobby, uh, he, he was through managing me. And Bobby uh, was devastated, and so he just walked out on the street that day of broken man. Yeah, 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 girl, yeah, 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 to call. had uh, recorded for Decca records, and they had released them. And he had made, I don't know, a couple of two, three sessions uh, with Atlantic. And they were going to release them. So I said, stop. No, 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 no. You can't do that. Before we do anything, I'm going to make at least one session with Bobby Darren. And uh, Splish Splash 
was our first big hit single. Split, splash, I was taking the bath. Long about a Saturday night. Bobby had made friends with a popular Manhattan disc jockey, Murray Kaufman, known to everybody as Murray the K, who also had a show business-inspired mother. And Bobby was over the house, we were having some dinner, and I got a telephone call from my mother, who writes songs, God love her. And she's got all kinds of titles, and she said, what do you think of this one? And she said, splish splash, take a bath. Well, I broke up, and you broke up, and uh, I turned to Bobby and said, why don't you try to write it? And uh, he said, all right. So uh, right after dinner, he sat down at the piano, and I went inside and uh, started getting dressed to do my show. And before I was through with my show, Splish Flash was written. And I guess uh, that was the night that your rocket was sort of launched, boy, because <laughs> everybody knew it was going places, I'll tell you that. I heard the record. I heard Splish Flash. And I... There was a little excitement in the record. I wanted to meet this kid. So I sent for him. And he came in. He was a cute little guy. He was about 22 years old, darling little boy. And um, I told him I'd like to take him to Vegas. I asked him to sing a song. And he got up and he sang a song. And I took him to Vegas. With his big hit, Splish Splash, which was followed by hit after hit, he became not only a great singer, but a great showman. Wherever he appeared, he did much more than the average rock and roll singer. In 1959, Bobby wrote and recorded Dream Lover, one of the more than 170 songs he would write or co-write in his lifetime. It was a milestone in Bobby's career, his first record to be accepted by both teenage and adult audiences. Dream Lover skyrocketed to number two on the pop charts. My dad wanted to be a performer. He wanted to be an all-around showman. And I think early on he realized that rock and roll uh, was just the step. 
to getting there. It wasn't the end goal. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. James Durante, in person. hadn't cut off my curls when I was a little kid. Who knows, I might have been another Anna Marie Alice, but get it. What is this? Say this. Boy, I'm a single. Now, don't wait. That you shake my hand. Well, tell me just where I stand. Now, isn't it better to go to life with a smile and a song and a walking around with a face 11 miles long? Wait, now, stop you know when you start the music. Stop the music. This is humiliating. Everybody wants to get into the act. That's right. That's right. Everybody wants to get into the act. But you want to be the act. <laughs> Sorry, Jimmy. But you know, imitation is the sincerest form of, of flattery. Don't try to soft soap me, Fabian. <laughs> <laughs> but Fabian, I'm not Fabian, Jimmy. I, I'm Bobby Darren. Proof. Proof. Just prove it. Go ahead. Hey, that's catchy. Let me hear that again. Left hand. <laughs> it doesn't sound like the same song. <laughs> Look, Jimmy, I'm sorry I came out the way I did, you know, when Bert introduced you. But, you see, your songs are part of me. I mean, I wanted to do them all my life. They're really me. Well, I'll level with you, son. You know, I always wanted to do some of your songs. You know, I'm kind of a splish-splash man myself. <laughs> you know something? That's the real me. Ladies and gentlemen, splish splash, hit it! Big fan shine, we'll sing to this song. On the first Saturday night, I dropped up, just relaxing on the top. Everything and everything is all right. Sing it, sing it, sing it. I stepped out of the tub, with my feet on the floor. And I wrapped up the towel, and I opened the door. I did a splish splash, I jumped back in the tub. How was I? That's snapping. But, Jimmy, I can't sing unless I snap. But you ain't singing, son. You're listening. I can't even listen without snapping. <laughs> Wait a minute. What are you, a turtle? <laughs> Look, Jimmy, it's very simple. Just let me show you. You can make a, an old song brand new just by snapping a little bit. Give a listen. I want two, three. Ding, ding, ding. I ding, ding. I ding, ding. Oh, what a tune. Ding. I like that. I think I think, I think I do. Mm, it's got the whole world spooning. How about that? You know, if a singer like you, if a singer like you, we all can make mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> you know, if a singer like you busts a finger, there goes the whole act. Bobby now went to Atlantic and said, I want to do an album of standards. I want to do an album like, you know, Sinatra or Dean Martin or Victor Moan or whoever was out there there. And they said, you're out of your mind. You're a rock and roll singer. Rock and roll started it for him, but I think he always had in his mind, he wanted to prove he could sing. He wanted to prove he could perform. And so when he went into to Am and Earn again and said, I'm doing an album of standards, and they looked at him like, you're out of your mind. You just sold a million rock records. He said, I'm sorry. This is where I'm going. This is what it's about. Somewhere beyond the sea, she is there waiting for me. If I could fly like birds on Sailing. It is 
far beyond the star it is near beyond the moon I know beyond a doubt my heart will leave me there soon we will meet beyond the shore we're gonna kiss just as before Bobby had been performing the song Mac the Knife in his nightclub act for a couple years, but it was always something of a throwaway. It never really caught the audience's spirit in any way. Um, I'm not quite sure where he originally came across the song. It was obviously a Kurt Weill song from Three Penny Opera, but I don't know what had brought it to his attention. The biggest things that have ever happened to me have been accidents. Mac the Knife happened to me, not as single selection, uh, as chosen by yours truly, you know but as one of 12 tunes that were going to be done in an album. It happened to be the best, the most cooking of all the 12 sides, and it was slotted band one, side one. But it was not intended to be a single record. Bobby Darren and I were very close. We could say anything to one another. He called me once on the phone. He says, listen to this record. He plays it over the phone. I listen and says, this is my next release. I said, are you out of your mind? I said, what are you trying to be, a saloon singer? You're a rock and roll star. You're huge. You're on a roll. You, 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 and it's, it's the sort of stuff you'd hear for a lounge lizard, lizard sing. I mean, it's a Kurt Weill, the Three Penny Opera sort of thing. It was his only number one record. I dumped on Mac the Knife. So much for my advice. Has such teeth there. Just the jackknife As old Mac Heath, baby And it keeps it mm -hmm. Out of sight Two, three, four, two, two You know when that shot bounce With his steep, baby Scarlet billows Start to spread Fancy gloves, though, where's my key? So there's never, never a trace of red. Oh, let it get good now on a sidewalk, huh? Sunday morning, uh-huh. Lies about a oozing light. Eek! Someone sneaking oh, round the corner, uh-huh. Could that someone be old Mac the Knife? Uh, there's a tugboat uh, 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 down by the river, don't you know? Where cement bear just drooping on down, oh, yes. You know that, that cement is there strictly for the wind, of girl. If I was gonna get you a dime, brother Mac, he's back in town. You help out Louis Miller. He done disappeared, honey. Yeah, the drawn out. Everybody jump in with me. All his hard earned cash. Now my keep spins right on. Just like a sailor. Could it be, could it be the Lord done something rash? Come on, come on. Loose around. 
Stay tuned as Bobby Darren spins his success with Mac the Knife into a ticket to Hollywood. But right now, please call this station with a generous pledge of financial support. Your ticket to fine programming every night of the year. Well, we'll be back to Bobby Darren beyond the music in just a moment, but for now, please stay with us. It's going to be another exciting evening here on PBS 6, public television for the Central Valley. First, however, I'm asking you to take advantage of this brief intermission to become a new or renewing member of KVIE Channel 6 for another year at just $35 or more. And tonight, if you pledge at the $120 level, we have a great thank you gift for you. Now, $120 is just $10 a month on our Easy Checks plan. It's quick and easy. You'll just, it's just pennies a day, and you'll get to take home the home video of this show. Now, it's quite a collector's item with archival performance footage that you can't get anywhere else. And, of course, that extraordinary stage presence. What a master performer he was. Relive the memories and pledge just $10 a month for a year to preserve these great performances here on PBS 6. Now, a second option at the $120 level, if you'd rather just listen to Bobby Darren sing, then please choose the companion recording on compact disc of Bobby Darren's most popular and enduring hits, featuring songs like the one you just heard, Mac the Knife, Artificial Flowers, Clementine, and Bill Bailey. Now, if you'd like the audio cassette of tonight's performance, then that's available at the $60 level of membership, just $5 a month on our Easy Pay plan. Now, we have a special offer for you tonight at the $180 level of giving, just $15 a month on our Easy Pay plan. If you can't make up your mind which thank you gift to choose, then take the $180 option. You'll get to take home the video of tonight's program along with the CD. This is your best bet, it's your best value, and it's our best way to say thank you to you for pledging your support to member-supported KVIE PBS 6. I'm Clayton Whitehead, and I'm joined in the studio tonight with my good friend, Christina Dillon. Christina? Thank you, Clayton. You know, I loved listening to Dick Clark in that last segment talk about how he wasn't really sure that Mac the Knife was going to be a winner for Bobby Darren and was kind of advising him against it. Well just goes to show what a winner it was. Mac the Knife remains number seven on Billboard's Hot 100 of all time. Truly, truly a crowd pleaser. And of course, the show is a real crowd pleaser. Great man, great talent. And of course, uh, we lost him uh, along the way and he's no longer with us. At age 37, Bobby Darren's life snuffed out way, way too early. He had rheumatic fever as a child and as the years went on, his heart just couldn't take it. And so tonight we're celebrating a great, great man. And how are we doing that? Well, we're trying to load up 14 new or renewing members to get in on the action tonight. And we had a special call in the last break. Chad from Valley Media took a call from Jan. And Jan is one of our viewers who sounds like she's out there doing a little Christmas shopping tonight. She got not only a Bobby Darren package, but she bought Feet of Flames and a couple of products from our Carolyn Mace program. So we encourage you to do that tonight, folks. And you know, if you're thinking about doing a little holiday Christmas shopping, well, we do have a fantastic gift certificate that we can send off to you. We can uh, put it in with your pledge, and then you can put it under the tree or in a Christmas stocking so that if the gift doesn't quite make it there in time for the holidays, well, then, of course, you have a little memento, something there saying, hey, I love you, and I've done this for you, and I've supported public television along the way. 923-6600 is how you get in on the action. And if you're wondering how to pay for your membership here, well, it couldn't be more simpler. First of all, it takes about three minutes to do so, and then we get you right back onto this fabulous Bobby Darren program. If you'd like to choose uh, some different levels, well, that's appropriate. The nice way to do that is through our Easy Pay plan. You could use five or ten or fifteen dollars a month. You tell us what you want deducted either from your checking account or we'll take it from a designated credit card. It's just a small form you fill out, and then we do it monthly, and then you never have to worry about it again, of course, until it's time to renew again next year. Or you could choose to pay for the entire pledge with a credit card, and we take all the biggies, Visa, MasterCard, American Express, or Discover. Or if you'd like to send a check when your pledge packet arrives, that's the old-fashioned way, and we certainly appreciate that. So, anything that works for you, we need a level that's comfortable for you tonight. The bottom line is we just want you to join us as a member in good standing so we can guarantee quality programming like this Bobby Darren special to come to you throughout the year. 923-6600, little music to pledge by.
dream lover, just one of so many Bobby Darin enduring classics. We'd like to give you the opportunity to take some of them home with you tonight to put, a, put them in your permanent library so you can enjoy them again and again. Of course, the $120 level, that's just $10 a month on our Easy Pay plan. You'll get the home video of the show that you're watching right now. I promise you it's a collector's item. This incredible performance materials that you have here just, just simply aren't available anywhere else. As Christina said, Mr. Darren's life was snuffed out far too soon. This is one of the only opportunities you'll have, thanks to great performances, to remember his performance style over and over, as well as all the information they give you about his family. Of course, his marriage to Sandra D, his child, all of his friends. It's a great way to relive those memories again and again for just $10 a month on our Easy Pay plan. Now, also available at the $120 level is this incredible CD. Now, this is Bobby Darren, the best of Bobby Darren, I should say. And this is volume two, a 21, uh, uh, 21 different songs from Mac the Knife, Lazy River, uh, My Favorite, Beyond the Sea, What a Difference a Day Made, Skylark, Just Friends. So many wonderful songs here that you can just play over and over. Again, $120 would be the CD, the best of Bobby Darren. If you prefer the audio cassette format, we have that for you at the $60 level tonight. The same great songs, the same Bobby Darren for $60, just $5 a month on our e easy pay plan. Now, if you're like me and you can't decide what to do, well, we have a deal for you tonight. For just $180, $15 a month on our Easy Pay plan, you can take home both the video of tonight's program as well as the CD, these 21 enduring classics for Bobby Darren. The choice is yours. Won't you go to the phone now and give us a call at 923-6600 or 1-800-270-6601. Christina? Well, thank you, Clayton. And look how we're doing on the goal. Not too shabby. 10 out of 14. Still looking for a couple more to help us reach our goal. Really appreciate the strong show of support, especially during this lateness of the hour. Valley Media is on the lines right now, ready and willing to take your call. Please give them a call at 923-6600. Join us, join the fun, and join in the celebration of this great man, Bobby Darren. Back to the show. Remember, if you would like the Bobby Darren Beyond the Song VHS, you can join, renew, or send an additional gift at the $120 level. Our address is Post Office Box 6, Sacramento, 95812. Coming up next, take a close-up look at the colorful life of a Hollywood icon, Bobby Darren, Beyond the Song, right here on Television of Distinction, PBS 6. Ladies and gentlemen, Bobby Darren. For once in my life, I have someone who needs me. Someone I've needed so long For once in my life I go where life leads me Somehow I know I'll be strong Bobby Darren moved fearlessly into the high-powered, high-profile world of Hollywood, stepping into a new spotlight that he seemed born to fill. Who could make my dream come true? For once in my life I won't let sorrow hurt me Not like it's hurt me before Playing the role of Bobby Darren, I am assuming somebody else. In my desire to find whatever Bobby Darren wants to find, that the easiest way for me to do it is through other people's characters with depth and meaning and understanding. Bobby was already one of the uh, great showmen, and it was certainly no surprise to me that uh, Bobby could act and could bring the same exciting qualities to his acting that he, bring, that he had been bringing to his uh, singing and to his uh, performances in clubs. I'm in Ward 7. Is there anything you need? Yeah. Some cheaper booze and some juicier broads. <laughs> he wanted to get into uh, movies, have a very thriving movie career. He was a fine, fine actor. Nominated for an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor. Who knows how many other things he would have accomplished had he lived a normal life. My mom and dad met on the set of Come September, and the song that she had heard was Beyond the Sea, and she loved it. And she'd hum it in the dressing room. And he roars onto the set in his, you know, lime green, loud, obnoxious self and suit. 
And she said, what is this? This is why not only do I have to work with him, but he's going to be around for three months. And she couldn't stand him. And we thought he was obnoxious, and he was. He was insecure because his first time really doing a big movie. Plus, he was in love with my mom. And then finally something turned, and in her words, it, it just happened quickly. Sandra Dee at the time, my mom was, you know, America's sweetheart. So, holy Toledo, and the studio is having conniption fits. Oh, your image, what are you doing? And then married soon after. It's almost like fiction, but it really happened. You know, most people would say, don't, don't have another singer on your show if you're a singer, but I like to have other singers on. And I tried to do three men shows a lot. And uh, one of them was with Robert Goulet and, and Bobby. And one of the sketches, which was really, it was a funny sketch, uh, Goulet and I were talking about Sandra D. Well, Andy, I want you to know that it was a lot of fun working with you. Well, you didn't exactly call for a stand-in every time you had to do a love scene with Sandra D. No. Oh, I don't blame you. I mean, I had a few of those love scenes myself. <laughs> How about that scene in The Hunting Lounge? You know, Sandra and I were sitting on this couch all alone, you yeah. know, right in front of this fireplace. I want to tell you when she... Hi, you fellas. Hi. 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 Hi, Bobby. Hi. Hi. We're just talking about your wife. She's oh. a great girl, isn't she, Andy? Oh, yeah, she's a very warm person. Oh. <laughs> yeah, very warm, especially in front of a roaring fire, eh? <laughs> Wait a minute, Bobby, you don't think... So you guys really enjoyed playing love scenes with my wife on the screen, huh? Well, uh, I don't hmm? know about Andy, but personally, I felt a little bit... Uh, I felt a little bit uncomfortable. Uh, me too. Me too. <laughs> Especially with you hanging around all the time. <laughs> Fellas, you know, I'm just kidding. I know it's a world of make-believe. It's a film. I understand that. Yeah, then how come every time I kiss Sandra D, you hum Mac the Knife? I laughed at him all the time. I loved to have him on the show. Uh, and he was on it quite as often as we could get him to come on. Because he, was, he always uh, lent so much. He gave so much to a show. I'm going to sing a song that I wrote for the title tune of a picture that Sandy and I did called That Funny Feeling. And I'm not afraid to die. <laughs> it's a good thing. I've seen your act. Come on. There is an air about her, something so square about her, that makes you care about her more than you should. First that funny feeling, then the warm comes on. A dull comes on the inconceivable becomes achievable it's unbelievable what you can do when that funny feeling touches you and she has got that funny feeling too He hadn't been singing for a while. I hadn't been performing uh, live, at least. And he decided to open at the Coconut Grove this big thing. And, uh, he knew an awful lot of movie stars, and, and so many of the, the people in show business appreciated his talent, so uh, everybody showed up. I mean, I mean, the list of people that were there was tremendous. I was there with my wife, uh, Claudine, and um, loved the show, because I loved to watch him work anyway. I think what he wants to do is to, is to perform. As long as I'm singing, there's a bell up in my brain that's ringing, making a crazy ding dong. And if this band don't desert me, then there's nothing in the world can hurt me. Long as I'm singing my song, bring me trumpets, legato, add some saxes to them, strings, pizzicato, rhythm, let them do them. Now as I'm singing, then the world's all right and everything's swinging. Now as I'm singing my song. Lord, if I 
his courage. He sings very excitingly, and he also sings well. He's got good taste, and I hate him. <laughs> I think a lot of the veterans in the business, like Sammy Davis Jr. or Bob Hope, George Burns, Judy Garland, Ellis Fitzgerald, all respected Bobby because his talent was really out there. But more than that, his talent showed a respect for the work they had done in the business. George Burns has been like a father to you, hasn't he, Bobby? He's been a lot more than a father. He really has. Well, I love Bobby. I'd like to adopt Bobby. I'd make a fortune. <laughs> <laughs> I had to do an impression of him beside. And doing the impression, I found that we were exchanging ideas back and forth. You know, I'd be doing a move, and in Washington, D.C., a girl said, you're stealing from Bobby Darren. <laughs> <laughs> Sam was in the dressing room. We were talking about Bobby Darren, and he said, that's the only man I'll never follow. And I was taken aback to hear that Sammy had someone that he thought was too great an entertainer to even consider as someone to follow. And I know he meant it. I mean, he was just the best. It's all yours, lady. Look up, mm -hmm. look up, uh -huh. and see uh -huh. your maker yeah. when Gabriel, Gabriel, Gabriel blows his horn. All three Gabriels? All three Gabriels. I'm so weary of toting Oh, such a load Tired of trudging down that lonesome road. Look down, look down that lonesome road before you travel on. Shall we go to space? Look down, look down, look down, look down, look down, look down, look down that lonesome road. One of the high costs of being a celebrity, as Bobby would soon learn, was the public acknowledgement of a very personal family secret. At some point in his life, he found out personal information that caused his whole life to turn upside down, that tore him apart, and he got very introspective. My dad grew up thinking that uh, his sister was his sister, and in fact, it was his biological mother. He didn't know that until very late in life. Bobby was never the same because of it. He was devastated, and it definitely altered him for the rest of his life. At age 19, Nina found she was pregnant with Bobby and unmarried. It was the 1940s, and she and mother Polly decided that for all intents and purposes, Bobby would be considered Polly's child. So while Nina was giving birth, Polly packed up their apartment and moved to a completely different neighborhood. And so Bobby was raised as Polly's child and Nina's brother. Polly always told Nina, once you tell a lie, you live that lie for the rest of your life. And that's exactly what they did. 
It was understood that anybody who married me was marrying Bobby and my mother into the bargain. That's yeah, your sister, Nina, and with her is her husband, the wonderful man who helped bring you up, Bobby, from Lake Hiawatha, Hiawatha, you say, New Jersey. Here are Mr. and Mrs. Charles Maffey. Nina and Charles. Thank you, Paul. Oh, my. You've meant a lot to Bobby, Mr. Maffey, Charles, and sure uh, has. your sure help has. made life a lot less hard for Bobby and his mother. Remember you used to ride downhill on your bicycle, standing on a seat without touching the handlebars? <laughs> I don't even... remember that. I remember falling. That's what I remember. <laughs> to make it even more frightening, you used to twirl a cane in one hand and his hat in the other. Oh, no. Till he petrified my mother and me. Many people feel he died of a broken heart. That this man who wanted honesty from everyone was given the ultimate lie. The ultimate lie in life. I ask any of you out watching to put yourself in that position, that you've grown 30, 35 years, and your mother is not your mother. And not only that, the double whammy, the woman you idolized, Polly, is not your mother. Very, very difficult for him. And I do think it shattered him. He was never the same. Emotionally staggered by his family history and unanswered questions about an unknown father, Bobby concentrated on his songwriting and returned to the recording studio. Interesting to see the way he recorded, writing a song and recording it in the studio, which is, and, and teaching the musicians, you know, rather than having it all written out. It's that you play this, da 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 and you play this, da 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 and rhythm section knew what to play anyway, because they, the, um, he would play it on the guitar, and everybody just sort of came in. In the final analysis, it is the song and not the singer. I do not go in ever with a song that I don't think is a hit. It keeps on raining every day. Just keeps on raining. Won't go away. Same old love story. She lied, I cried inside. A song like Raining, I was penned at 2 o'clock in the morning. I felt like yeah, that was that kind of thought. Like those guitar chords, they sounded right, and I did it. Uh, if that's a hit, there'll be nothing more flattering in the world, because it indicates two things. It indicates, you know, an appreciation for, uh, for a lyric content and a melody, in addition to a performance, because both things are embodied on that one uh, record. And it keeps on raining Oh, how much more Will it keep raining Will it still fall Bobby, I know, was troubled by the fact that his marriage failed. He was married to Sandy for six years. They got married in December of 60, and they got divorced in 67. The men a friend who lend and then to all is raining. This awful The reality is that Bobby is probably uh, the only performer that ever covered the bases that he covered and covered them well. He was not just a singer. He uh, played the piano, he played drums, he played guitar, played the harmonica, and played them all well.
He had the ability to take lighting and make, he could take his hand and come in on his right hand and mesmerize you. And you're just checking that hand out. And before you know it, he's gone, whap, and that, and that light's out. And you're out. So when you saw Bobby live, you would get in the full measure of him. He was able to take on a ride. And when he left you, he always left you wanting more. I always felt that Bobby had this, this feeling that he was passing his time. I remember him telling me one day uh, that he had a rheumatic heart as a child and he wasn't supposed to live beyond a certain age and how important it is to love life to each and every moment and to really enjoy what's coming your way. And he would relay his bright, energetic approach to his audience and the audience would react and there was an electricity about his being on stage. He was just different. It was something special. And I think it goes back to the illness, knowing that he may not see 50. So let's do it now. You know, there may be no tomorrow. Hey, uh, yeah. Once in a lifetime, a man knows a moment. One wonderful moment when fate takes his hand. And this is my moment, my once in a lifetime, when I can explore a new and exciting land. For once in my lifetime, I feel like a giant. I saw like an eagle, as though I had wings. And this is my moment, my once in a lifetime, though it may be just once in my lifetime.
Next, Bobby Darren finds the friend of a lifetime as he meets and works with Bobby Kennedy with a new resolve to make a difference. You can make a strong, positive statement right now, too, with a generous pledge of financial support to this station. Well, don't you dare touch that dial. Good evening, Sacramento and Central Valley. We're still here at PBS 6 waiting to hear from you tonight. We'll be returning to our program on Bobby Darren shortly. What an incredible career. What an incredible man, singer, dancer, actor. The husband of Sandra D. Is that not amazing? Anyway, we'll be returning to our show so shortly. We just have this little intermission tonight to tell you about the wonderful thank you gifts we have to send your way when you become a new or renewing member of KVIE, your PBS station here in Sacramento in the Central Valley, Channel 6. Won't you give us a call tonight and pledge at the $120 level? Now, that's just $10 a month on our Easy Pay plan. If you do, you'll get to take home the video of the show you're watching right now. It's a collector's item. It's a treasure. It's a necessary part of your library. If you love and, and, and love that enduring music of the 1950s and the 1960s, uh, if Sandra D and and Bobby Darren is the kind of uh, the kind of music and actors that you want to hear, well, then you'll want this tape to become a part of your library. Just a hundred and twenty dollar pledge tonight. Or if you'd prefer, we also have the CD of a number of Bobby Darren hits. In fact, 21 hits in all. This compilation is volume two of Bobby Darren's, uh, the best of Bobby Darren, I should say. Such songs as his incredible Mac the Knife, What a Difference a Day Made, Skylark, Just Friends, I Guess I'll Have to Change My Plan, and many, many more. 21 in all. And the CD is yours at the $120 level. Now, at the $60 level, that's just $5 a month on our Easy Pay plan, we have the audio cassette of that same recording just $60 a month, and you'll be making a big difference here in the life of PBS 6. Now, if you're a little bit indecisive, we have a deal for you. At the $180 level, you can take home the video of the program as well as the CD, and we've had a number of callers already who have called in. They've come to the plate. They've said, PBS 6 is important to me, and I want some of those Bobby Darren gifts. We welcome Myrna from Nevada City and... Monty, I think, from Oakdale. I hope that's your name. Welcome aboard anyway. We're glad to have you at the $180 level. Now, there are just three, there's three easy ways to support PBS 6. You can choose our Easy Pay plan. Now, this is a system of automatic monthly withdrawals from either your checking account or your designated credit card. Five, ten, fifteen dollars a month. You tell us the amount, we'll take it out, you'll never even miss it. If you'd like to pay for the amount, uh, the entire amount on a credit card, please note that we take American Express, Visa, MasterCard, and Discover. Or last but not least, please wait for your pledge package to arrive, and when it does, just send a check along with the stub that we'll enclose, and it's that easy. It'll be done in just a few minutes. Our phone bank is standing by, and Christina Dillon is standing by in the studio as well. Christina, take it away. Yes, sir, I'm over here at our call to action board, otherwise known as the goal board. We have 11 newer renewing members that we're looking for this break. So far, two have already jumped on the lines, no doubt, getting in on some early Christmas shopping. It's the smart alternative here, KVIE, and the smart thing to do is to get in on the Bobby Darren gifts tonight. You know, I love Tony Orlando's quote in that last segment. When you saw Bobby live, you got the full measure of him. He truly did give it his all. And I love watching his performance footage. That's why I think the video is so key. But I also love the video for the other reason that in it, you get to see people like Andy Williams and Robert Goulet and Sammy Davis Jr., all the biggies sitting together on the stage reminiscing. It really, really is a lovely way to encapture history, a great memento if you were a big fan of that era. You know, Bobby Darren did the whole Vegas tour in Hollywood, and now we're going into this next segment, which is going to show his interaction with the Kennedys. It really is kind of the testament of the times. If you're looking for something special tonight, I'm thinking these Bobby Darren gifts are it. 923-6600, we're going to give you a little music to pledge by. The phones are a little cool right now, so please do the right thing. Go to your phone right now and give us a call. Has such teeth there, and it shows that pearly light. Just the jackknife, as old Mac Heath, baby, and it keeps it mm -hmm. out of sight. Two, three, four, two, two. You know when that shot bounces with his teeth, baby. Scarlet billows start to spread. Fancy gloves, though. Where's my heat? So there's never, never a trace of red. Oh, let it get good now on a Saturday.
sidewalk, uh, Sunday morning, uh-huh, lies the body, ooh, little light, eek, someone sneaking, oh, round the corner, uh-huh, could that someone be old Mac the knife, uh, there's a tugboat, ha, uh, ha, uh, uh, down by the river, don't you know? Still here and we're still waiting to hear from you. You know, I was in Pennsylvania last week on business. I watched the show for the first time last week on uh, Philadelphia's PBS station, and their phones are ringing off the hook. So come on, Central Valley, we want to hear from you tonight. A number of you have already called. Welcome to our newest members. We have Gail at the $120 level. Hubert, thank you for becoming a new member. Patricia, Sherry, Paige, and hello to her son, she says. Wonderful, wonderful new members. We're glad to have you. Please remember at the $120 level, that's only $10 a month on the Easy Pay plan. You have a choice of two great Bobby Darren gifts. One would be the video of the show that you're now watching with all this archival footage and all the songs and all the memories. And of course, the second choice also at that level would be the CD, 21 of Bobby Darren's biggest hits. Now, this is volume two of the best of Bobby Darren, and you'll find his most enduring classics there, like My Favorite, Mac the Knife, and Beyond the Sea. Now, if you prefer the audio cassette, we have that available. The little cassette tape is just $60. An annual gift to $60 equates to $5 a month, just a few cents a day on our Easy Pay plan. And remember our special offer tonight only at the $180 level, you can take home the video as well as the compact disc. So you'll have Bobby Darren coming and going every day of the week for now and forevermore. And most of all, you'll know that you're doing your part to keep PBS 6 on the air. Now we'll be returning to our program shortly. Remember there's three easy ways to pay. We have three membership levels. Our phone bank is standing by to tell you all about it. And they'll be staying even after we return to the show. So Sacramento, please give us a call and have a great evening. Remember, if you would like the Bobby Darren Beyond the Song VHS, you can join, renew, or send an additional gift at the $120 level. Our address is Post Office Box 6, Sacramento, 95812. Coming up next, take a close-up look at the colorful life of a Hollywood icon, Bobby Darren Beyond the Song, right here on Television of Distinction, PBS 6. Popular acclaim and commercial success were not enough for Bobby Darren in the late 60s. As the times changed, so did he. Even his appearance changed. His tuxedos were denim. His act was less Las Vegas. And the songs he chose to sing had deeper meanings. As the country reeled from devastating losses and disunity, Bobby wrote a heartfelt hit song. Come and sing a simple song of freedom Sing it like you've never sung before And let it fill the air And tell the people everywhere We the people here don't want war Hey damn, Mr. Black Man, can you hear me? I don't Bobby was very uh, close with Bobby Kennedy, campaigned for him. In fact, uh, they were up in Seattle right before he was killed. And whenever they'd be on the plane together and Bobby would come on and he'd say, sing my favorite song, and it was blown in the wind. And Bobby would take the guitar out and play it. This is a generous and compassionate country. That's what I want this country to stand for. Not violence, not lawlessness, not disorder but compassion and love and peace. Robert Kennedy was a huge influence. He really believed that RFK was sincere and could change things. 
and he was with him a couple days before he was murdered, and uh, that stunned him to the core. Stunned him to the core. When you hear it, little girl, you feel it. When tears are in your pretty eyes, I will dry them home. That destroyed him. He was a stalwart supporter. He came to see me in my old office in Sunset Boulevard, and he said, I don't, I don't really know where I'm headed. That's the kind of friend he was. That's the kind of human being he was. That's the guy when uh, uh, Bobby Kennedy got shot, who went to his grave. If you remember, it took so long for them to get to the grave site at Arlington that it was dark, and when the ceremony was over, they were leaving, and it was too late. They weren't going to cover the coffin until the next morning. He slept at the coffin. He would not leave it until it was covered. I'm on your side. I think he suddenly looked around and saw Vietnam and saw a sexual revolution and saw poverty and civil rights and said, wait a minute, why am I singing meaningless lyrics? You know, this is not what it's about. And so I want to sing about things that matter. If I were a carpenter Bobby started in the top ranks of show business at such an early age that he really was growing in front of the American public. And a lot of the changes he went through were natural changes. He always tried to let his nightclub act or his routine represent whatever he was going through at any given time. If I were a miller, at a mill we Audiences didn't know how to respond to Bob Darren and, and, you know, without his toupee and without his tuxedo wearing denims and uh, growing a beard or singing peace songs. The audience does hear what they see, and they were seeing an overaged hippie singing peace songs, and that's what they were hearing. They weren't hearing somebody really evolving and understanding that the world was bigger than a Las Vegas nightclub stage and, and trying to, to personify that in his work. He went for it. He didn't sell records at times. He was booed off the stage in Vegas, but he had the conviction, that the genuine love of music and, and risk-taking. And no, I don't think other artists had that, that uh, bravery. Would you marry me anyway? 
marvelous public tells you what they want you to do and what they want you to want to see you do and what they will pay Mac and beyond the sea and, and some of these days and things like that was the bag that the country had clearly and simply defined for me and as long as I wear the mantle performer I must do that this was his if you will midlife crisis his search for meaning at some point it's about what do you leave behind Many people cross, you know, the beaches and, and the footprints leave nothing there. He wanted those footprints left, and this was his way of doing it. He loved it. He lived it. That's what he wanted to do when he was on a stage he was alive. You're walking along the street, or you're at a party, or else you're alone, and then you suddenly dig. You're looking in someone's eyes, you suddenly realize this could be the start of something big you're lunching at 21 and watching your diet declining the charlotte roots accepting a fig when out of a clear blue sky it suddenly gal and guy and this could be the start of something big on one of his last nbc shows uh, you'll notice him slapping his hand on his side because the circulation wasn't working uh, you can you can romanticize this. You can say because of his uh, prior health records, he knew he was destined for a short life. The clock was ticking. I mean, that's very dramatic. We all have that. We all know we're going to die. We just don't know when. I think he knew he was going to die, but it was going to be a shorter length of time. And he never would have slowed down. You know, people don't do that. I think he was beginning to get sick. And, uh, you know, that fear of that illness was overhanging him, overhanging over him all his life. Somewhere beyond the sea, she is there waiting for me. If I could fly like birds on high, then straight to her arms I'd go sailing. Some fool once said the show must go on. I don't know who said it, but everybody's lived by it since then. And he went through, he had nine more shows to do. He did nine shows where he was sick. He was really having trouble breathing. He was just in terrible condition. And he said to me, he says, I am very sick. You know, he says, it's, and he let me know what he felt. He felt he was going to die right there. Just as before, and happy we'll be beyond the sea. Sailing. Don't go sailing. No more sailing. Don't go sailing. So long sailing. Don't go sailing. Bye bye sailing. Don't go sailing. No more sailing. Don't go sailing. Don't go sailing. Don't go sailing. Don't go sailing. And boldness in the face of terrible obstacles is always an inspiration. Bobby Darren's amazing body of work lives on and continues to inspire musical artists of all ages. I get this award for um, 1973 Dick Clark American Music Awards. It may have been the first year for American Music Awards, as a matter of fact. And here we won Group of the Year and Song of the Year. And boy, it was a thrill. And we got up there and I get this award. And the first thing that came to my mind was Bobby because I remember singing Yellow Ribbon and making believe I was Bobby Darren in the studio I mean I remember going you know I'm coming home I've done my time and I was trying to be Bobby and I was thinking Mac the knife and so the first thing that came to my mind was I'd like to accept this award in the memory of Bobby Darren and the audience erupted and then when the show was over we have the usual after-the-show party that Dick has. And one by one, I'd be cornered by some performer. I remember Roger Miller walking up to me and says, Hey, man, I was Bobby Darren on Trail of 
for sale or rent. And Rod Stewart, hey, man, he was the he was incredible, man. Thanks for the Bobby Down. That's the kind of impact he had on all of us. I just want everybody to know how great he was. You don't find anybody with that much talent all packaged in one body. He was extraordinary. He wanted to be the quintessential American singer, actor, band leader, musician, songwriter, the whole thing. And I, I miss him immensely. And what I really miss is what I know would have been such a, a blast to be around him. I'd do anything to have that. Not just as the sun, but just to be a fly on the wall, you know, and to, to be part of that. The excitement, the fun um, that he brought to life. Yeah, you play. Yeah, phony, a phony, a phony, a stick of macaroni. Happy will be beyond the sea and never again. Bobby Darren, what would life have been like if you were still with us here? Boy, what an incredible tribute to a tremendously, tremendously talented man. And, of course, uh, Dick Clark said it best. He's never seen so much talent compiled in one man ever in his life. And that is really a strong statement coming from somebody who has clearly seen lots of greats come through his doors over the years and a lot of friends paying tribute to this wonderful man Bobby Darren here tonight the only reason this show is here is because of viewers last year who joined us as members at KVIE your PBS 6 and if you enjoyed this Bobby Darren program please won't you go to your phone right now at 923-6600 or 1-800-270-6601 and let us know that this show made a difference this is really a tribute to a dynamite performer and uh, you know as as one comment I heard in Time Magazine said that uh, Bobby Darren was almost a little bit ahead of his time, but time has sure been good to his music. And in that last segment, you heard the discussion about how he tried to uh, get into new styles of music and how his public was a little standoffish with it, didn't quite know how to take it. Well, what's nice about the uh, offerings that we have today the, in the gifts is that we have a little mix of both. We've got that Vegas showman, and we've got the more sensitive wartime music, and the times at which he got involved with Bobby Kennedy reflected in these gifts. For example, we've got that $120 level tonight. Again, that's just $10 a month on the Easy Pay plan. You can get the home video of the show that you've been watching tonight. Really is quite a collector's item because it contains all that archival footage that you saw with friends like Andy Williams and Sammy Davis Jr. and uh, Tony Orlando and of course his wife Sandra D. Really, really a nice tribute to the master and 
uh, available to you tonight at $120. So it's something to have in your video library. If you were the Bobby Darren fan and you remember screaming over uh, seeing him on American Bandstand, then this would make a great item for you. But if you'd rather just listen to Bobby Darren sing, well, then we do have a very nice CD. And this also is available to you tonight at the $120 level. The reason I like the CD, it's called The Best of Bobby Darren Volume 2, but it contains 21 songs, folks. So this is absolutely loaded with all of the big music. Mac the Knife, of course, his signature song, Bill Bailey, Won't You Please Come Home, and a nice song for this time of year, Christmas Old Lang Syne. And uh, the real cool thing about the CD is it also contains... Uh, in the jacket of the CD, a real nice pictorial uh, look at Bobby Darren. It's almost 12 pages long, this little insert in the CD. So it's kind of a bonus on top of a bonus for you. And then, of course, we do have an audio cassette available tonight at the $60 level. And, of course, on that uh, audio cassette, you're also going to get the 21 songs. So I think it's a total bargain at the... Uh, uh, at the audio cassette level because that's only five dollars a month but let me tell you about a bonus we've got a really special deal if you can't make up your mind which thank you gift you'd like to have tonight well then we have a really nice one hundred and eighty dollar level and don't go ooh, you know one hundred eighty dollars that's that's a little much fifteen dollars a month is all we're asking and if you want to put this on our easy pay plan well that makes it very manageable what you get here is you get the cd and you get the videotape and now let me tell you why this is a, a really good deal if you are the consummate Bobby Darren fan or somebody you love is, I have noticed in watching the show tonight and in comparing it to the CD, there are songs on the video that are not on the CD. So that is really critical. If there's a song you love that you saw on the video, there is a chance, other than Mac the Knife, that it may not be on the CD. So if you want the whole thing, then you may as well get that $180 level. Really stretches your money, but you get two great items that would have been valued at $240. 923-6600 or 1-800-270-6601. I'm Christina Dillon, and the lateness of the hour is upon us, but I'm delighted to be joined in the studio by Mr. Clayton Whitehead. Clayton. Thanks, Christina. Now, there are three easy ways to support PBS 6 tonight. One option is to choose our Easy Pay plan. Now, this is a system of automatic monthly withdrawals from your checking account or your, your credit card, just five, 10, or $15 a month will make a big difference to PBS 6. If you'd like to pay in full, we accept all the major credit cards, Visa, American Express, MasterCard, and Discover, or you can simply send in a check for the full amount when the pledge packet arrives. We have a goal this hour of 11 new members, and we have seven so far, so we're getting very close to our goal. 